start recording there we go okay good evening everyone so um lesson number three um this week so so far we've been um, learning about the structure of pictures and how to look at those using no tans um and basically using that to help us decide where the structure of the picture is and how we need to change the image in order to make it balanced and interesting um so today what we're going to do is we're going to develop that a little bit further so if you made a plan last week if you made a no tan like one of these then you can use that to help you uh, when it comes to shading and using color and adding texture and so forth so um if you remember last week i was drawing a deer that was drinking uh, and you can see its reflection just near the water that it was drinking from as well and i made that no tan before and then i started drawing it out last week so we're going to carry on uh today well i'm going to carry on with this one today you'll see what i've done on it in a few minutes um but the idea is to maybe create a, a slightly different feeling in the picture as well than in, in the original photo by using a single color to begin with and then working back in with the more natural colors that you can see in the photo so i'm going to show you that now and perhaps just talk about a few uh, pencil drawing techniques um, before we go over to my desk so i'm going to take you over there now uh, to my desk here we go here we go right so um just a reminder of what we've been looking at here so We've got the note, we've got the two uh, pictures of the deer. Uh, one just shows the highlights and the shadows uh, and all the midtones and things have been um, excluded because we've just turned those into pure black uh, and then left the really light areas in the picture. So um, this is a kind of no tan that would have been done uh, perhaps on a, on a computer. Um, so when you actually come to draw, obviously there'll be more detail, but you understand uh, where the lightest and where the darkest areas are and where you perhaps need to add more dark or add more light areas to help balance your picture out. And I've got that little example just down there of, of one that a student did um, last week. So um, I'll turn those off because I'm going to talk a bit about colour pencils. So. Um, I've got a few techniques on here, some of which you'll be very familiar with and some which you might want to try out tonight. OK, so at the top there, we've got uh, a range of techniques that you can use. So we've got um, everything from using dots or stippling, just using hatching, just using cross hatching, back and forth stroke and scumbling so these are some of the basic things all of which you would have done with normal pencils and then over on the uh, on this side where all the spheres or balls are you can see that some of these techniques can actually be adopted for creating 3d form in your images so if you've not done um, many um, or if you've not done much uh, drawing or, or you're a beginner then it's a great idea um, just to have a practice um, using the pencils to create a 3D form like a sphere. So all you need to do, you can draw around a, circ a circular shape uh, and then see how it goes to make them 3D. So you can see um, down the bottom here, we've got cross hatching, then we've got contouring, uh, which is literally lines that go around the shape in the green there. And then we've got layer and blend. So taking two colors and blending them through into the middle and scribbles, create your shading, cross hatching where lines intersect with each other. You can see that over there on the uh, right hand side and then straight hatching as well. Um, although the little arrows indicate some curves there. OK, so um, obviously with pencils, we're going to end up doing quite a lot of uh, color blending um, on here as well. So. Um, some of you will be very familiar, of course, with uh, the color wheel that we've got here. Um, so we'll zoom into that one there. So on the picture that you're going to see me looking at in a few minutes, I start um, by shading as if I was almost just using a normal pencil, like a graphite pencil. I chose to use um, kind of a bluey purple um, on my picture. 
um, overall on the deer and then work over with the other colors. And then in the background, we're gonna have lots of greens and yellows uh, and perhaps a few, yeah, mainly greens and yellows. So um, the blue or the purple are gonna be very harmonious with each other and look really nice. Uh, and then opposite the purple, we've got a yellow. So I'll have little bits of yellow in my picture. So with complementary colors are basically any color from the color wheel that are opposite each other. And you'll see from this other little diagram that I've got over here, if I can, there it is, this one. Um, you'll see what happens when you start to mix opposite colors from the color wheel uh, into each other. So the top row here, um, you can see the red and the green. And when you start to blend those colors together in the middle, you get this kind of brownie uh, color. And same with a blue and orange. So it looks kind of gray. And then uh, again, you've got this kind of brownie sort of grayish color in the middle. Uh, and you'll find yourself um, layering pencils, colors on top of each other uh, and creating these kind of much more organic um, colors, which are brilliant for making your picture look um, even more interesting, rich, and um, and uh, and natural looking. And then, of course, we've got the other colors here. We've got um, mixing uh, colors that are quite close to each other. So if I'll just sorry, I'll zoom in again. Uh, you can see here we've got the warm color range um, in here. So we've got the red or the red orange orange and then the yellows you can see how they've been blended together and it's also got on this particular diagram how a color could be warmer and cooler on here as well um, we've got the yellows and the greens mixed together the warm colors the vi uh, with the violet in the center there and so on okay i didn't want to go into too much detail with that because it's a little bit of extra stuff but it's just to make you aware that when we start to put colors together, this is the kind of thing that starts to happen. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly with what I've just talked about, greens and reds or oranges and blues and yellows and purples, opposite colors and do different things to colors which are next to each other or harmonious or an analogous, I think it's also called on the color wheel. Um, so. Um, it's nice to have the color wheel in front of you when you're working. Um, I will have one on screen, but if you just type in color wheel on the internet, you'll find hundreds of these things um, that are all really useful, often really useful uh, when it comes to helping with color selection. And I have all this sort of thing in mind when I'm working too. All right, so we'll go over to the, the desk and I'll just uh, show you where I've got to with um, the drawing that I'm doing. And then we can um, I'll show you some techniques, um, some things similar to this uh, on the on the desk. So here we are. Oh gosh, it's all a bit a bit wobbly. So here's my no tan that I did for the drawing that I'm doing at the moment. And you remember me last week applying a grid over the top. Um, you can also, if you want to, one thing that um, a few people did. Uh, today at classes, they they'd um they'd done a really nice drawing already, and they wanted to carry on working with that drawing uh, to do the color pencil version. So there's absolutely nothing wrong, of course, with um make doing a sh uh, doing a a tracing either with carbon paper or with normal tracing paper um of your picture so you've got the outlines really quickly and you can get on with the color work okay so um yeah so i gridded this up last week just to get the basic outlines of this image because i started a new one uh, one that i hadn't done before um, and then uh last week i also started to add color to this um this picture now you'll see that there's kind of, um, and you, you may not be able to see it as clearly, so I'll zoom in. Uh, and this is where you'll see some of the things that perhaps I could have improved on. So, and that is when I drew my grid out, perhaps I should have used a different pencil and not pressed so hard because I've got these lines coming through. So 
So that's something to, to watch out for if you're using a grid is um, to make sure your lines are really light so they can either be removed or worked over without these little lines appearing here. But for a study, I'm, I'm OK with that at the moment. Now, going back to colour, you can see that throughout the picture, we've got little bits of um, purple appearing over the whole of the image. Now, um, what I decided to do is maybe go for something that maybe felt a little bit more impressionist. So that's uh, using colour and light to express uh, the moment uh, in time a little bit more and cap capture a bit more perhaps atmosphere and things. So I've decided that I, I would shade the whole of the, the deer first. And you'll see, you maybe saw me doing this last week. I just used it, used the purple pencil. And um, so I've got this one here, which is actually called Delft Blue, but it is a kind of a, a purple. Actually, no, this is a different pencil to the one I was using before. Let me just grab another one. Um, this one. Can't see the name on it, but that's that's the one I was using just there. So it wasn't Delft Blue. It was something I can't read because it's got paint all over it. Um, but um, I, I used uh, this purple pencil to shade the whole of the deer first, as opposed to saying, oh, gosh, it's, it's brown or it's whatever color. I just decided to use the purple to begin with as a base layer uh, to the picture. So often I talk about putting some color down first and then working over the top. This is a similar idea with uh, the color pencil. So the whole of the deer as I said a few times now, has been shaded using uh, the purple pencil. And then I start to work back over the top with the other colours that go with the picture. OK, and I can also go back in again with the purple if I want to. So you've got your kind of tones and shadows in there. And I should point out that whilst working on this, I was reminding myself with my plan of where the highlights and, and the important shadows are going to be. So even if I've perhaps made them darker than they are in here, in this two-tone version, I'm still aware that, I, yes, there's certain areas that I'd like to stand out more than others. So the neck on the deer was a, a little bit lighter in places, so I've made it quite a lot darker in here because it would balance my composition in the way that I wanted to a little bit more. So keep that in front of you so you can work from it. That was the whole idea of making that plan. Uh, and then um, once you've got your purple down, you can work back into the colors. Now, a few pointers on paper as well. This paper is cartridge um, paper. So it's not particularly tough paper for pencil work. Um, so cartridge paper, if you keep um, pressing down hard on the paper, eventually it will come loose. It will go all fluffy and, and come apart. So um, the best paper to use, and you don't need it as such, but the best paper to use is going to be uh, some kind of watercolour paper. So this here is a watercolour paper. The different types of paper, uh, as far as watercolour goes, there's a couple that um, be aware of. Uh, and it often says on the front. So this is a, a cold press paper. So a cold press paper is going to have a little bit of texture on it. You won't be able to see it on here, but this has got a little bit of a bumpy texture. So that's a cold press paper. And a hot press paper, I kind of think in my head it's been ironed almost. So it's going to be really smooth and really good for shading with and working into with your colour pencils. So um, this paper is actually quite interesting because it's it's a bit smoother on one side than the other, even though it's a cold press. So um, we could use that to work on. Um, but cartridge paper will be fine. Just build up your colours really gradually as opposed to going in really heavily to begin with. OK, and that way you'll you'll soon see um, that the colours become richer as you layer your colours on top of each other. All right. So um, as you can see, I've, I've done a few example techniques down here. I'm going to do a few more over here as well. So I'll show you the idea with the 
base color, first of all. Um, one thing to do is make sure as you're working that your pencils are as, as sharp as, as possible. It makes it much easier to add mark making and uh, get into those areas that you're working with if your pencils are nice and sharp. Uh, somebody brought in one of those electric, um, no, it wasn't electric, it was one of those ones that you can wind pencil sharpener uh, to make it easier. I've always, pretty much always anyway, I've always done this, just sharpened it with um, with a knife. In fact, I was, I've mentioned this in previous classes, I was taught to do this at, at uh, college. So making a little sculpture at the end of the pencil like that so um so you this is a great if you're just starting or you or you need a bit of a warm-up being um having a little go at doing some shading to make a ball shape like this look 3d by shading it is a great way to get into it and practice so here i'm doing curved lines over the top of each other. So like cross hatching but with arcs. And thinking about where the light's coming from. So it's coming down this way at the moment on this, this drawing. And trying to get a sense of the shape of it. It helps as well put a little bit of a shadow in like this and the point where it's darkest is going to be where it really where it's hitting the surface of whatever the ball is sitting on if it is like that And in the middle of the shadow, it will be also be the darkest just there. OK, so I've done you can see I've done that quite lightly, but then uh, with blending and things, you can get uh, your next color and work in with that quite lightly. So you can see I've put a purple down. And now I'm going to add this brown over the top. Hopefully, there it is. Something was caught on the end of that then. So, working gently over the top. We can start to build up the surface of the uh, picture, the ball rather. So imagine this might be sort of the surface of a deer or something. I put the purple in, so I've got the nice shadow. And then I'm working back in with the next colour, which is the brown. And then I could go for something more yellow and hatch over the top of this. Add a bit more colour in there as well. If I can just get a bit closer. Mm -hmm. And then I could bring the purple back in. And then maybe a little bit more blue, the impressionist idea. So using blues for shadows to express light is quite nice. OK, so you can see I've started to build that up a little bit um, with lots of these kinds of strokes. Um, you can also, oh, the one thing that um, is really cool, if you've got lots of detail in your picture, uh, lots of very small detail, white detail particularly, 
you can um, engrave or um, in, emboss or indent the paper, I should say. Um, so um, let's try that. So th this is this is the tool. Uh, and I got loads of these off Amazon. They come in like packs of 10 and they're only about three pounds or something like that. I can't remember now, but um, they've got these little nodules on the end just here. And you can use those to make marks in the paper before shading. So I, I'll do another circle, actually. Why not? A little one. So I'm going to put some marks in here. So I'm pressing down quite hard to indent the page, like so. You can do dots, stippling, you can do anything. So you won't be able to see this yet, but you may have understood what I'm going to do. I'll put some down here as well. And then I'm going to get my pencil and shade over the top. Get a bit close up. Oh, that's as close as I can get at the minute. So, there we are, look. So you can make areas that are going to stand out in detail using something like that. Now, if you haven't, obviously you might not have one of those. So you can use other things, um, such as sometimes I think like um, a sharp or a, a strong pointy sort of object like, I don't know, the end of a pencil, uh, sorry, yeah, the end of a, actually no, not the end of a pencil, but something like that anyway, something kind of uh, sharp and pointy. <laughs> These are obviously made for this, so they've got the little ball on the end, so it won't rip the paper. But I was going to say compass, actually, but um, obviously you've got to be careful with a compass. So there you see, so we've got these marks coming through. You can do all sorts. You can do lines as well and make the lighter areas of, ch of um, grass. It's just got a nice green. We go and if you don't want these to be white you could always of course color the surface further so at first so let's put some yellow down like that then get uh, something to emboss with emboss the surface And then get the, another colour and go back over the top and you've got yellow lines instead of the white ones. So quite effective uh, as a technique. Some people are using this today um, for the spots on the back of a deer or something like that. So a really nice um, effect there. So simple um, techniques um, as well. I'll do... Um, I'll do this one too. This is quite nice here. This could be used for grasses and things like that on your picture. Um, so it's a little bit of mixing up the mark making techniques that I showed you with the cross hatching and stippling. So let's do. So it's just lots of these overlapping lines. So really long dashes and stuff like that. And then see what happens when you mix another colour. In fact, I was talking about opposites. So let's try something, uh, the opposite side of the colour wheel. So let's try a red on top of a green. And you get a duller sort of green and red mixed together put it back on again so thing to remember is you can layer all of your colors there we go so that's gone quite nice and dark there as well so really nice and um so going back to the the drawing then so 
those are just a few things, but if you want me to show you a few more, I will do, of course. So if I zoom back out, um, on the photograph, um, we have got lots of this kind of detail at the back. Um, and on my Notan, I took out a lot of that because there are a lot of mid-tones in there. So I removed all the mid-tones just so I could see um, how this deer would work against a dark background um, or a darker background. And then I decided to think about um, this impressionist idea. So on here, you can see all of my shading is just going in the same direction like this. So lots of layers of colour. And I'll, I'm going to do some more of this tonight. Um, and you'll see me develop it further. But the, the lines are all going in the same direction. So it kind of removes these harsher shapes and simplifies the overall effect and makes it softer in the background and therefore I could go quite dark here with this different colour but the deer is still going to show up because it's got much more complex detail and shading um, and with the colour at the top you can see that um, let me just get that picture a bit bigger um, the deer the colour deer let's bring him over a bit that's me. Um, no. there. 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 So on this one, you can see that at the top of his back, it turns kind of bluey. So I've added more blue on the top of the, the back of the deer too. And then down here, we can carry on with some of these uh, brownie colours in the reflections. Um, but there's, um, but it's a bit darker, the silhouette or the, the reflection, sorry. And the, but over the top, I can put some uh, horizontal lines and um, burnish some other colours back over the top of that too. All right. Now I want to show you more actually. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry on for a second and show you a couple of other things that are quite nice to try out. Um, so we've got a burnisher. Uh, which we, I know we've used in these in class before, but for those that haven't, uh, there's a burnisher and I lent someone a blender today, um, which I now can't find. I'll be in the other tray. Um, no, I've only got my, um, oh, there it is. So there's two things and these come from Derwent as well as my pencils. So we've got a burnisher and a blender. So the burnisher kind of polishes the colours and makes them smoother and the blender helps really for two colours to blend together. So I'm going to do a blend of a red and a green. So <clears throat> we can go, just make that smaller again because I don't need that for a moment. Okay, so start with a red. And gradually release the pressure on the pen, pencil. And we'll see what happens. There we go. And if I get the green, so these are all Derwent pencils as well. Really lovely quality. I've had them for a long time. I've always enjoyed working with them. But you'll find there's lots of brands of pencils which are very good too. But it's always worth, as we were talking about before the class started, investing in some pencils, some good ones, because they really make a difference to how your work turns out. So there, look, I've blended those two colours together. It looks really orange on the screen here for some reason, on my screen. But on yours, it's not too bad. I'll just blend that a bit more on both sides. And we'll see what happens with the blending tool. So it's it's not got any pigment in it. It's just kind of a hard um, substance, sort of grainy substance that um, pushes the two colours together. So I'll see how close I can get. Yeah. And if I push around like that, you can see the difference in it already. 
it's kind of getting rid of all the grain on the paper, all the white grain, and really smoothing everything out, which is wonderful because it makes it look so nice and soft as opposed to grainy. Worth blowing any residue bits off as you work. And you get a lovely smooth blend like that, which is wonderful. Okay, um, and then we've got the um, burnishing tool. Uh, I'm just going to grab a bit of another colour and <clears throat> we'll see what that does. So let's try this kind of grey colour, maybe. Felt grey. So put some felt grey over the top for no particular reason at all, just to see. So there goes my felt grey, and I've still got quite a smooth effect. And then we'll work back over with the burnishing tool. And it kind of puts pushes that colour into the other colours that we've got underneath. It's quite a nice smooth effect as well. Okay, so those are you might not have one of those, but um, it's, it's worth knowing about them because they're really lovely to use. Um, if you haven't got one, you can use just a white pencil to do the same sort of thing because you'll often find with uh, colour pencils that the whites uh, don't do much. They they when you put when you put them on top of the colour. Um, but if you start with white and then start applying colour on top, that kind of gives you a, an interesting. It makes it makes the colours paler. Um, so if I could find my white, there it is. So I've got a different white here. Uh, it's a Chinese white, but it's a it's a different. Um, it's still Derwent, but it's slightly different. So if I um, put some white down first rather than put the colour down first. And then I'll say get a try a bit of blue. So he goes with the blue. So I'm not pressing particularly hard. So we've got white underneath here already. The colour would normally look like this there, but with the white underneath it's paler, so sometimes it depends on what you start out with. And I'm adding white over the top, so I've kind of sandwiched the blue between two layers of white, and I've got a much paler result. And then I could try burnishing them as well. And this is where I remind you that this is only cartridge paper. So that's something to be aware of. At some point, the paper will give way. It's doing really well at the moment, though. There we are. And if I put white on top of the blue, if I started with blue, there it is. Now, this is a bit of a softer white that I've got over here. so. We'll see what happens. So adding the white on top. And you can see the difference just here. Let's try burnishing it as well. Actually, this is the yeah, this is the burnishing. So let's blend that together and you get a different result. Okay, so that might seem obvious, but um it's worth knowing when you're when you're aiming to do something specific with your piece. Okay, so um, I will be continuing to work on this beautiful deer. I'm going to on the photograph. We've got quite a lot of yellows at the top, so I'm going to keep it quite dark, and then I'm going to go a little bit yellower at the top. But I'm going to be aware of the fact that I would like it to be uh, quite dark in the background. Okay, right. So
looking to do next is to start building um, building the tone using more of a monotone um, range of colors. So I'm only using a couple of colors here at the moment, um, but it's about building up those layers. So on the deer, for example, to get this more impressionist effect, I started with mainly a purple and then started to introduce gradually, um, particularly because I'm on cartridge paper, gradually um, introducing more of a range of colors and therefore building up the richness of the tone in the picture as well. Uh, and in the background, um, I'm also simplifying all of the detail um, using this diagonal kind of um, technique approach, which goes off to the left there or um, diagonally upwards um, because I'm left handed and it's easier to do it that way. But if you're right handed, you might end up going the other way, I suppose. Um, but you will see me switch um, a little in a little while. I'll start um, shading into the reflections and I'll be going off the in the other direction to show the how the reflection um, mirrors the um, the background here. So um, here we go then. Where, so this is pretty much how I worked with the deer above. Um, so you can see me just adding texture of, um, sorry, tone in a single color, which would be a purple, uh, generally over the top of the whole of the deer. Um, so there you go. So you've got the tone over most of it and I'm already starting to introduce some other colors as well. So I've got a bit of brown going in here, obviously. Um, and then in a bit, you'll see me introducing some more colors, which you can see in the photograph on the screen here. Um, also got out the old Notan there that I've worked with before um, in order to remind me of some of the highlights that I selected earlier. In order to bring those forward and balance some of the composition a little bit more as well. And uh, that was just a, it talks quite a lot about different types of pencils and sets that you can get. I'm using Derwent pencils that I've had for quite a while with quite a large range of color. Um, so looking at the reflections, often the reflections are either a bit darker or the color is slightly different. So in the um, reflections here, I'm using much more of the blues and things as well. Um, not because it's water, but because the blues are coming out a little bit more in the uh, reflections down here. Some of the things that I found interesting as well were the, um, the little bits of highlights of white on the uh, deer's face in the reflections as well, which obviously uh, where the light has picked up the surface of the water. The, another thing I do is is um, to capture those reflections as well, or the flat surface of the water, is to, what, even though I'm doing these diagonal lines here at the moment, or shading, I later go back in and do some horizontal lines across the surface of the water. Because when looking closely at the um, reflections, you can see how the ripples in the water have created that effect to give it this flatness. Sometimes putting in the um, diagonal lines in the way that I've done here. It's not just adding color, but it's also reminding you of how you're working. So those lines can be used when applying the rest of the layers of colors. And it's very much about this piece and the way that you can work with pencils is using lots of light layers of colors on top of each other to build up the rich, riches of color, but also the texture. 
So I started working a little bit more quickly as we neared the end of the lesson. But next week, we shall carry on working on these. It's building up so many layers of lovely colour can take quite a while to do. So looking at it from a bit further away, we can see how it's starting to come together. So the white pencil that I'm using is a Chinese white. It's got 7,200 written on it as well. It's not from the same set of pencils that I've got, but um, it's actually a really lovely soft pencil. Um, a draw, it's called a Derwent drawing pencil. But I find that it sits on the surface of the ones that I'm using really nicely. It doesn't make a pure white or anything like that, but it does um, add a stronger highlight because it sits on the surface of the colours that we've already got here. So I was really focusing here on the gr lovely greens in this, this part of the picture. And then uh, on the left hand side there was it was much it was much more blue, but there was still some of those lovely greens appearing and some of the yellows as well. And then obviously some more of the horizontal lines. And then I start to bring some of those nice bluey greens and some of the yellows back in the background around the deer. So even though I've put in quite a lot here, you can still, you know, you can keep going. You can keep building and working back into things and refining the colours. And it's really nice to learn and see how those colours mix. So I hope you've enjoyed today and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.